Welcome back to RetroCAD. And today, AutoSketch. You know, when this product was first released, I was skeptical that a sub $100 program could rival the AutoCAD software I was already using. But now, having explored it, I can see that it's a powerful and useful program I probably should have considered. Let's take a look. In 1986, Autodesk's John Walker held a press conference where he announced a new low-cost drafting software, saying, AutoSketch delivers for only $79.95, far more capability for 2D drafting and design than the $1,000 AutoCAD we were selling only four years ago. The software industry continues to lead all others in delivering value for the dollar, and we're proud to be both the value and performance leader in our market. Along with this announcement, Walker revealed that he had undergone a battery of tests and had been pronounced not insane. Walker said that he was examined by a panel of prominent Marin County psychiatrists, psychologists, faith healers, astrologers, and vacuum cleaner repairmen, who rated Walker's sanity on a scale of one to five. Mass murderer Charles Manson was used as the standard for one, and physicist Werner Heisenberg was used as the standard of somewhere between 4.9 and 5. The panel rated Walker as 2.6 on this scale, which Walker claims definitively demonstrates his mental soundness. Walker immediately challenged other CAD system designers to similarly prove their sanity. And if they don't, he added, well, then it's up to you, the customer, to ask, what do they have to hide? AutoSketch 3 ships in a classic 90s retail big box that would have looked at home on the shelves of a CompUSA or Circuit City of the time. The slipcase opens to reveal a series of manuals and other paperwork. Right off the top, we've got a registration card, the announcement of a $10,000 drawing contest, a brochure for AutoSketch symbol libraries covering many disciplines, an installation and performance guide, a tutorial book designed to get you up on your feet quickly with various examples and lessons, and a reference manual that in my opinion lives up to the reference manuals that Autodesk was creating at this time with diagrams and examples illustrating every command and also a useful index which made it quick to navigate. Then we have the software itself, along with some keyboard overlays. I just love this kind of hands-on stuff that used to come with software. It looks like we've got two entire copies of the software here, so I'll be able to draw in full stereo. Let's get this installed. So before we get into version three, let's take a quick stop in AutoSketch version one to see what all the insanity questioning fuss was about. We've got a series of view commands, so we can do things like a zoom box, which is kind of your familiar zoom window, to, to navigate around. We've also got a pan command that works in the modern way where you choose an object and a direction, and it moves all of your entities, you know, the drawing space itself in that direction. The draw commands are quite straightforward, Everything you would expect is in here, even polygons. So if we draw a line, we can go in and check our assist attach settings. The attach is essentially the O-snap modes of modern AutoCAD, but there's only five to choose from here. But for, for this purpose, it's, it's pretty great. So we have endpoint chosen and we have it on. So we'll just go ahead. When we draw a line, it naturally snaps to the endpoints of the lines. Pretty nice. And we can just undo those because there's a full undo command. Another thing here in settings worth touching on is the property settings. So for example, if we had our color set to, let's say red, we could go into the property settings and say, we're gonna take the color and maybe we wanted line type and layer as well, but we'll just do color. And then we go to change properties. Anything we pick on just changes to red. Really nice. 
Are other change commands are things like move, copy. Let's see how the move command works. Move, we're going to select an object, pick this. We're going to enter a point to hold it by, and we're going to move it to a new spot. That's pretty much the way the move command works now. Scale, mirror, break, those are all here. In assist, we've got toggles for ortho, grid, and snap. Our layer command looks like this. Can't really rename these layers, but you can set the current, you can control visibility, so it's the basic stuff. Some measurement commands for distance, angle, and area. Dimensioning, hmm, let's try one. Horizontal dimension, points to dimension from here to here, and I'll put it here. Nice. And then file commands. So you can also save out to DXF from here, so you can have some interoperability with the AutoCAD software of the time. The information screen is somewhat interesting in this program. Uh, you've got a quote from William of Ockham that translates to, entities should not be multiplied beyond necessity. Hmm, something to think about. And then of course the game is in here. You can play Connect 4 against the computer. Duh, brutal. Pretty sneaky, sis. And then of course you can make and view slides. So let's move on to version three. All right, let's take a look at version three. I guess the best place to start is up in the settings menu. Let's take a look at the units, and this is where you would set up your decimal or architectural units as needed. Then you can also set up your grid settings. So for example, if we wanted a 12 inch grid, we can't tab over to the next field here. We've got to actually satisfy this dialog box over here by hitting OK, and then the value goes into there. And then in order to turn on the grid, this assist menu has basically toggles for stuff. So we would turn our grid on and I'm not seeing it at all here. Perhaps we're in too close for a 12 inch grid. Let's just set it to one. And there it is, nice. So to begin at the beginning, we've got a line command, and we can turn on a snap if we want to, to automatically snap to different points. It shows a little plus sign for the particular snap point you're going to get, which is kind of a nice visual heads up. Now you could just measure out, and you can see we don't have any coordinates to work with at the top, or anywhere in this program for that matter, like AutoCAD does. But what you can do is use a relative coordinate input system. So here we would say uh, relative to the point that we're at, go over three units and up six. So we would get a line like that. Or we can specify it this way. We can do a polar version of that, where we'd say give us a, a 20 foot line that goes at 90 degrees. And I'm not going to close my parentheses here just to show you what happens. It'll say invalid point entered. And the, the display down here, this command line, just sort of stays active. So you can go in and finish your command, however you were typing it, or modify it. And there we get a 20 foot line at 90 degrees. So I'm just going to erase, which is F3 in this program, and get rid of that other line. And let's copy this other We'll go to our change menu and we'll copy this line. We're going to pick our base point to be here and we're going to go this way. And we could either count out one, two, three, four, five, or we could say we want to do a polar five at zero degrees. There. Now let's just zoom all the way out to full. Our grid is now too dense for this view. So let's just turn it up. I had it set to 12 before. Let's see what. 12 looks like at this view. Looks like it's still a little too dense. I'm not going to worry about that. Or did we not turn it on? Nope, not going to work here. 
Let's just draw another line. I hear uh, old AutoCAD habits here. It's Alt F1. And we have an ortho toggle. We can turn ortho on and off. And then we'll copy it. Copy this guy. We'll go from here and we'll do our polar five at 90. Oh, you can see I mistyped down there in the command line. So it's five comma 90 there. We're gonna zoom and let's just see what happens if we wanna zoom out just a bit. There we go. We're gonna not worry about that right now. Zoom up on this area. So when we're working with commands that have settings, they're all gonna be in the settings menu, obviously. Fillet, for example, is one of those, an editing command for creating corners. This is where we would set our fillet radius. We're gonna set it for zero. And now if we go into the fillet command, it works as you'd normally expect. One interesting thing is that you kind of notice that box I was dragging around just a few seconds ago. Commands just remain active in this program until they're superseded by another command. So here we're just in the fillet command until we do something else. For example, we could even go in and save our file and it would save out normally and then we'd still be filleting. So it's kind of transparent that way. Uh, just to touch on a couple of other commands that are familiar here, uh, the stretch command works pretty much just like an AutoCAD stretch command. So a lot of things are really familiar in here. I can, I guess I can kind of see why John Walker thought he might be insane for giving a program this powerful out for the price that he did. Um, one of the interesting things in here is pattern fills and polylines. And first I'm just going to do a pattern fill. It works a little differently, and I'm just gonna go into the settings quick on the patterns and set one up. Uh, let's just make a uh, simple hatch pattern here that's gonna be 12. You gotta be careful when you click into these boxes, you get committed. You can't tab around and get to another one. So I'm just gonna pick this. I'm gonna make it scale 12. And now I'm gonna go in to do a pattern fill. And instead of being asked for a closed area, I am going to pick a series of points. And just to mix two things together here, I wanna go into the settings quick and look at the attach modes. And we saw these in version one. There's a few extra ones in here. These are the O snaps essentially. But if I turn on the attach mode, I'll be able to pick a little more granularly with this pattern fill. So I'm gonna go in my first point in this corner I'm gonna to go to the end point of this line. I'm gonna go over to about here and let's see if it gets a perpendicular, it does. And then the moment that I close this, the pattern fill is activated and I get put into a mode where I'm accepting or modifying. It's kind of like B hatch. And I gotta tell you like the hatch command in AutoCAD at this time didn't work this way at all. It would pretty much just do the thing that you set on the command line and then you were left with the result. So being able to modify this on the fly is really interesting to me. So we'll just go in and pick a different pattern like these, this looks like shakes. And there you go. Really interesting. Now, just to take this a step further, you'll notice that there are polylines in this version. And I find this quite interesting. When you go to draw a polyline, it works as you normally would. It's a multi-segment line. And here we, we got a pick basically a different command to get it to stop. It's really interesting. So we go into the polyline settings and we've got some an extra option for fill that I've never seen in AutoCAD before. And this is a pattern fill. So we're gonna go in and choose our pattern. And here we're just gonna go in and choose, oh, what do we like? The Escher pattern, so cool. Scale's gonna be 12. Okay, let's make our polyline wider. So let's make it 18. Now, when we go to draw a polyline, 
we can see we've got a nice preview of its width. And as we draw it, it fills in with the hatch pattern, which is just about the wildest thing I've ever seen. I, I absolutely love this. And then we have to choose another command in order to get it to cap itself off. And I'm not sure what happened here at the end. Is that, look at that. I can't even speculate on what that would be. All right, what else do we want to cover in here? We've got quick text. And if, you've, if you're quick with your eyes, you've noticed that in the draw and the change command, there's a text editor at the bottom of each one. And they're, they're a little different. So let's just go in and create a piece of quick text. First, we've got to go into our text settings. We'll choose a font. How about this one? We'll choose a height. Oh, let's make our text 14. And we set our justification in here as well. Create a piece of quick text. Very simple. So now if we go into our text editor, now we enter a point for our text, let's say here, and we're put right into an editor where we can type all kinds of stuff. And we can also do multiple lines. And we can arrow around and edit. Insert, oh, I wonder what these settings are. Oh, okay. Cut and paste is in here too, wow, so cool. And then it puts in all of the text there. Similarly, if we go in to the text editor under change and we pick on some text, we go into that, oh, here we're crossing the note, go into that same editor. So we could just go in and choose our text. And it looks like this text here is all one entity. That is really nice. There's grouping and ungrouping, which is essentially blocks. You can also send your blocks out to a disk and pull them in. The array commands are all here. Let's do a polar array because I love those. Let's just pick this polyline. We'll pick our center point right here. And we'll modify it. 41. Now that's nice. What else can we take a look at here? Our other settings are in here. Settings for dimensioning. Line types. Now it's not as visual as, as you would like. You know, it'd be cool to see a preview of the line types here, but for the price, we can't really argue. Our properties is where we set the property modes for changing, you know, which property is going to be changed by the properties command. So for example, if we set our color to red, much like in auto sketch one, now we go in and with properties and we choose some objects. Now they get changed over to red. Oh my gosh, it's filling them in with patterns. Oh, because it took the new polyline mode. Wow. Polyline width. Look at that and it hatched them in. That is really cool. I'm getting a little too excited. Okay, so there's also measurement commands, an additional dimension command. You can show the properties of an object. If we pick on it, there we go. It's a pattern fill. That's cool, like the list command. Some file commands. Uh, the part clip is where you send things out to a block. Save as now. We can read DXF now. Slide stuff. Our information. The game is in here. So I'm not going to belabor this too much. If there's something else you'd like to see in here, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at retro underscore CAD, and I'll be happy to do it. So let's wind this up. Wow. That's an interesting piece of software. You know, back at the time, I really kind of looked down on AutoSketch as just being some cheap toy, but 
After working with it now, I can see that if you combined it with a Northgate or Gateway keyboard, like one of those cool programmable ones, you could really make a go with this software. And you know, as someone who pulled out like the full money to buy a copy of AutoCAD back at that time, I think if I time traveled back there, I would, I would probably reconsider my options. Anyway, that's it for RetroCAD this time. Please subscribe, like, and tell your friends about our videos. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Retro underscore CAD. Thanks again for watching. See ya.